Hi, I'm Andrea, and welcome to this week's video for all you Reiki practitioners out there. Which is better, administering Reiki hands on the body or off the body? This question comes up a lot in social media every few months or so in one of the Reiki groups that I'm uh, involved with online. I think that they're maybe worried they're not doing it right or something like that. And in this video, I'm going to offer some really good reasons for doing hands off, some really good reasons for doing hands on, and also some tips and best practices to ensure that hands on Reiki is the most comfortable as you offer Reiki and also for your client as they receive. Just a quick note, I always use the word client in place of something longer and more complicated for the person receiving Reiki, whether you're a professional Reiki practitioner or not. First and foremost, it's so important that you ask your client what they prefer. Always when I meet a client for the first time, I ask them, are you all right with light touch? That way they can tell you their own feelings about it. Maybe they don't like people to touch their feet or maybe they prefer you to be hands off the whole time. But above everything else, it's their comfort that is the guide. So your client is really gonna dictate how the session goes. But if they tell you they're fine with light touch, then you have some choices to make. In my sessions, I always incorporate hands on and hands off if the client's okay with it. Let's start with really good reasons for hands off. First and foremost, the energy is gonna feel different if you're not touching the body. I think it's because you have less input. Um, you know, you don't have the physical sensation of the hand on their clothing or their body. So you can really just focus on the sensation of the palm and the fingers of your hand without interference at all. The feeling of that energy, we often get a lot of information that way. And an example of that is if we do Byosen scanning, which is a Japanese Reiki technique. If you didn't learn this in Reiki class, we scan the body and we'll feel sensations on our hands that indicate where Reiki is requested in the body. So obviously that whole technique is a hands-off technique. Another great reason to do hands-off Reiki is to treat the aura or biofield. The aura houses all the emotions, all the experiences that we've ever had. And so sometimes it can be of great benefit to offer Reiki to the aura and in particular locations within the aura. If you have other reasons that you like hands-off Reiki that I didn't mention, put them down in the comment section. I really like to, to read what you have to say. Now, hands-on Reiki is also really special. So if your client's okay with hands-on, number one, you wanna use a light touch. And I'll talk more about the hows of it in a few minutes. In this video, I'm really not going to explain exactly where is okay to touch and where isn't. That's a lot of common sense. And hopefully your Reiki master teacher went over that kind of thing with you in your class. Now, one reason that I incorporate hands-on Reiki in my sessions is that a lot of my clients really love the touch. They will tell me how nurturing and how comforting my hands were when I touch them on the body. I've even had clients ask me to touch you know, more um, because I don't touch everywhere on the body all the time. I use my intuition, I follow my guidance, so I might be above the body in places it would be appropriate for me to be hands-on. But again, I'm just kind of following my guidance on that. But I have had many clients comment about the, the special feelings that they receive in a Reiki session when it is incorporated with light touch. They also say things like they felt more sets of hands on their body than my two hands. So they almost felt like they had more support in that room, in that session, in their healing than only me physically present. They felt some of them feel like there's angels there helping with their healing or their spiritual uh, or spirit guides, things like that. And, you know, I don't really bring that stuff up to them in the session. That's not how I do my sessions. But sometimes they will bring it up and they will share their special experiences with me, what they sensed and perceived was happening during the session. But I have to say, a lot of the time, it's during those hands-on parts of the session that they will comment on as being extra comforting or extra 
nurturing to them. If you're strictly a hands-off practitioner, then I would invite you to try some hands-on Reiki with your clients that are amenable to that and just see what you what you think. You know, you might have decided a long time ago you were going to be hands-off. And so this is an invitation to switch things up a little bit because you might have different feelings about it and you might have clients that can give you feedback and tell you, I really liked the hands-on. So I think that's all about our practice evolving to try some different things and see what might work for us and our clients better as time goes on. Anytime we put our hands on the other person, you know, for me, I really try to put myself in their shoes and I'm always aware and mindful of my hands. And what I mean by that is how hard am I pressing on them? My advice is that it's light, but enough to be solid on them. If you're too light, your hand may sort of shake or hover a little bit. And any kind of motion like that is going to be distracting for the person that you're treating. Next, you want to think about if you're in a session and you feel like you're moving. Sometimes when we're in the flow of Reiki, I know for myself, I'll feel like moving back and forth like this sometimes or this way. And I might take my hands off the person at that point because even if you mean to hold your hands steady, that if you're moving, your hands are going to move. And I'm telling you, it'll be distracting for them. So if you're really in the flow, perhaps lift the hands up off the body. Another tip that I have is, you know, we need to protect our posture and our body mechanics so that we don't wear out or get sore because it can be a lot of work to hold our hands out in front of us over the client's body. One thing that I will do is sometimes I'll use my thumbs and I'll just kind of make like a little butterfly shape like that. So what I've done is I'm just crossing my thumbs. So I cross my thumbs and then I'll put my index fingers together like that. And it creates more of a unit. Instead of trying to to hold two hands, I've got a little bit more stability this way. And then I can put that over the client like that. And so when I do that, again, it just feels more stable. Another thing that I might do is use my ribs to sort of brace my arms. So I'll take my elbow, bend it in, And this is against my rib cage. I can hold my hand out like this now, and it's really not making discomfort happen in my back. I have the support of my body holding my hand out. And then I can take this hand and lay it over the other hand like this, and actually rest some of that weight on the other hand. But again, I'm braced against my body with that left elbow, And I think that this is great for sort of bridging over the body, especially if you're doing hands-off Reiki. If you're using a Reiki table for your sessions, the height of those tables is is usually adjustable. So experiment and find a height for you to work with that where you're not bending over a lot. But people come in all shapes and sizes, and so you might find a good height, but then during a session, you might find yourself sort of stooping over something out of um, the ordinary. If you're finding that you're leaning over the client, one little trick you can do during the session, I mean, you can't really adjust the table height in the middle of a session, but one thing that you can do is widen your stance. Take your feet, and uh, widen your feet out, increase the distance between your feet, and then what'll happen is it brings you down a little bit lower. So perhaps then you're not leaning over them and you can help save your back that way. Even though a lot of people say that they feel the energy differently with their hands off the body and they sort of like that, I would invite you to experiment because you'll feel the energy differently on the body as well. And I think one is not better than the other. And that's why I would encourage you to use both in a session. And finally, if you don't do any hands-on at all the whole session, please consider a little bit right at the end. And what I mean by that is at the end of the session, it's very important to ground your client. And 
it helps them get them back in their body. Oftentimes they feel like they're floating above their body or they're really sort of out there having a fantastic inner experience. And so if we can use touch at the end, place your hands at their ankles, at their feet, bottoms of their feet, somewhere there, wherever you know, you're comfortable doing that and bring them back into their bodies. This will help them come back more smoothly. They'll feel more like themselves and less spacey. I really want to underscore when you do hands-on Reiki to be mindful of your hand placement, but also the pressure. Because as we kind of sink into that Reiki meditative state during our sessions, it's easy to let our weight go. And I think too often we might be pressing too hard. We start out light and then we sort of relax and we can drop further into our client's body with too much pressure. And I would venture to say most people as they're receiving Reiki, if they're sort of uncomfortable with your positioning of your hands, then they are probably not going to say anything to you. So they'll be sort of suffering in silence. So it's really up to us to be mindful and aware of exactly what we're doing. Now on the flip side of this, people will say, well, I don't have that issue if I'm just doing hands off Reiki. So it's a lot easier that way. And while that's true, the client who might love light touch on the body is gonna miss out on that experience. And then the other point I wanna make about that is they can lose track of you in the session and sometimes they like to know where you are. It can help you be more connected and more synergistic in the session. And they can actually feel more supported and feel as though you're more present with them, which may be really important to some of your clients. If I've missed any pros or cons of hands-on or hands-off Reiki, please let me know down in the comment section. I'd, I'd really like to hear from you. Above all, have an open conversation with your clients about what they're comfortable with. And then use your guidance through the session and maintain your awareness to ensure that they are most comfortable during the session. You're not pressing too hard or your hands aren't vibrating or anything like that. And at the same time, take care of your own posture, utilizing some tips and techniques that I've gone over. I hope you found some value to this week's video. And if you did, I'd ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have a question that you'd like me to address here on the channel, please leave it in the comments or you can always email me at andrea at mainstreamreiki.com. My website address is also down in the description if you'd like to check that out and see what else I'm offering there. Thanks so much for joining me and Reiki on.